Bush. Number three, more torture gate. The guards and Stalagmeisters at Gitmo used to use a technique called frequent flyer, in which detainees were repeatedly moved from cell to cell to cell to punish them with disorientation and sleep deprivation. In one case, one detainee was moved six times a day for 12 days. Saying it was abusive, the Pentagon ordered an end to the frequent flyer program in March 2004. Now a Pentagon investigation, complete with incriminating documents, proves that the Gitmo guards were still doing it several months after they had been told to stop. Number two, Gitmo at the White House Gate, a story buried deep in Susskind's new book, The Way of the World. A Connecticut college graduate born in Pakistan, working at the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, was walking past the gates of the White House when he stopped to scroll through his iPod. Susskind writes that Usman Kosa was suddenly besieged by White House security officers, one of whom screamed, the backpack. They ripped Kosa's knapsack from his back and dumped its contents on the sidewalk. Then they threw him into an SUV, drove him into the White House, took him into the basement and into a heretofore unreported interrogation room in the White House. Cement walls, hanging light bulb, mounted video camera, the works. When they finally figured out he was just some guy, they let him go. In the White House. And number one, forgery gate, Susskind again, only this time confirmed by the magazine The American Conservative, his story that the Bush administration ordering the CIA to fabricate a letter tying Saddam Hussein to 9-11 plotter Mohammed Atta. Writing in The American Conservative, Philip Giraldi says that an extremely reliable and well-placed source in the intelligence community said it is true, and that moreover, Vice President Cheney was personally behind the forgery. Giraldi's source says that Susskind is incorrect in one detail only, that Cheney and the White House did not go to the CIA to create the fake letter. Cheney, Giraldi writes, hated and mistrusted the agency and would not have used it for such a sensitive assignment. Instead, he went to Doug Fight's Office of Special Plans and asked them to do the job. It was Fight's Office that produced the letter and then surfaced it to the media in Iraq. Well, Giraldi's source just made a liar out of White House Press Secretary, Deputy Press Secretary Tony Fratto, and everybody at Fix News, and the other Talking Points parroters, and he just made Susskind's book into another document, if not actual evidence. But there's a slightly larger issue. Giraldi's source would seem to be, of and by himself, reason to follow John McCain's advice. Speaker Pelosi needs to call Congress back into session immediately, and the House Judiciary Committee needs to open hearings into the impeachment of, at least the Vice President of the United States.